Welcome to part 25 of our N Walker Let's Play. Last time, the Watcher taught us basically everything we didn't know about the history of Zodiac and Hydaelyn, and it might be the first time that we've actually really got a more unbiased, I guess, uh, telling of things, or at least it sounded like that, because I think most of what we know about Zodiac and Hydaelyn, we heard from Hydaelyn themselves, or from an Asian who definitely had one specific leaning. Um, so I am curious to see what else we find out today. It seems we're also headed over towards this, which apparently has pilots. So I'm wondering if it is a spaceship or something, which would be really cool. So let's go talk to the Watcher and see what we do next. At long last, the Watcher is ready to fulfill his final duty. The time has come for you to be on your way. The crater at the heart of Mare Lamentorum, where Zodiac was imprisoned, is not so easily traversed, however. Let us call upon Argos, the familiar whom you met earlier. He should have no trouble bearing you across. I am all here for Argos. I feel like that's the Lustrous Dog, right? As Heidelin created me as the jailer, so too did she create Argos as the guard. Also, thanks for, for teaching me how to pronounce this word. It is his nature to appear when needed, and yet he is nowhere to be found. Strange, mayhap the imbalancing of ether has affected him. Let us make for the crushing brand and attempt to call upon him there. You need but recall the path you walked with Argos before, and you will find your way. If he labors in service to Heidelin's plan, I see no reason not to do as he suggests. Shall we make for this crushing brand then? But I think it's safest to go back inside because I forgot we were up really high. And jumping to our desk, probably not a not a very good plan. Especially when the fate of all worlds seems to be rested on our shoulders. So somewhere around here. There was a way to traverse down. Maybe if we follow this blue, blue path, that will lead us on our way. I forget exactly where that was. I was so enthralled by by our new puppy friend. But this seems we seem to be doing the right things. Look at us remembering things. There's life and growth inside the moon. we seek is just ahead at Chlorophox Grot. You see, Argos cannot manifest without sufficient concentrations of ambient ether. You would be hard pressed to find a greater confluence than inside this cavern. Follow me. Do I feel like we're going to explore new areas and I am all for that. Oh my gosh. 
Ooh, look at those. These very round things. I feel like these look like if you took the outside of a pumpkin off, you'd have just those stringy things holding the seeds. That's kind of what that looks like to me. Yes, here we'll do nicely. The lunar spongoi draw ether from the ground, which is then dispersed in the air. At present, however, the ambient energies are not quite sufficient for Argos to manifest. Might you be willing to spare some of your own to help the spongoi along? All right, let's go feed these spongoi some ether. Oh my gosh, those, those, those weepers need to stop with their tapping feet. It's stressing me out a little bit. I'm like, are they coming for me? Argos manifests in a flash. He seems glad to see you again. Can we take him home? <laughs> a most fascinating creation of Heidelins. Would you not agree? Should the need arise, he is even able to create reflections of himself on... Oh my gosh. I just need a horde of Argoses. That's, that's all I need from this game. Also, we're now definitely on Team Heidelin because she created puppies that multiply. Though I assure you it was no reflection which accompanied you earlier to the brand. No, Argos was quite eager to be at your side then, as he is now, it seems. I cannot recall when last he showed such an affinity for anyone. Indeed, I thought him more likely to shy away from you and your companions. Perhaps it was more than a sense of duty that compelled him to aid you before. I mean, Heidelin did say we were going to, to meet an ally. Maybe it's our, our wee pupper here. As for your companions, <gasps> did they all get an Argos? Oh my gosh, yes, hordes of Argoses. This is what we need. Unexpected, but greatly appreciated. I believe we are all ready. Also, we get to see what it's like when larger, larger people hop on Argoses, which I was curious about before. Although maybe their Argoses look larger, it seems like, from over here. Then let us return outside that you may cross the chasm. Sweepers are gonna give us a break. Your destination is the structure there across the Cradle of Darkness. But climb onto Argos's back and he will take care of the rest. Also love that Argos has autopilot. It's very good for us. Once you arrive, it should not take long to find the ship's crew. The facility is designed to rouse them from their slumber in the event of Zodiac's destruction. Heed their counsel. Together, you may guide the star and its people to a kinder fate. All right, so we're going to a spaceship full of ghosts. This is gonna be amazing. This is where we part ways, but know that I shall ever be watching and praying for your success. Our allies' assurances notwithstanding, we cannot be certain what awaits us on the other side, so perhaps it would be best if we did not all go at once. I propose the two of us cross first, while Thancred and Uriange wait here. Yes, let's do this. Onward. A malefic ether yet permeates from the crater, remnants of Zodiac, most like.
This is an impressive door. Hopefully we've got a key. This music is always just the warmest glowy music. I love it. The structure is enormous, though that is hardly surprising given the size of the average Amoratine. Yeah, that's, that's true. They are giants. Maybe we're so small because we're just reflections of them. So we're teeny tiny <laughs> shards of people. Apologies for the wait. Right then, let us head inside and oh, are they coming too? You're never allowed to leave a puppy alone. No! I thought they were gonna stick by our sides forever. Maybe we just get the one? Most intriguing, a means by which he can serve with energy, mayhap? Well, I certainly wouldn't want him to blink out of existence on our account, helpful as he's been. Thank you, Argos. We'll take things from here. Stay here where it's safe, all right? Yeah. Always be safe, Argos. If Argos is to remain without, let us not keep him waiting over long. I love the automatic doors. This place is huge. And so many crystals. I do not see any ghosts though. Where are all the sundered? Uh oh. We've got that worrying music. Oh my gosh, that Asian music, yes? Our moonship pilot should be around here somewhere. Is that right? Okay, maybe it's not gonna lead into the Asian music. What are you? And why are you so adorable? Are these the Lopperets or whatever that the Watcher was talking about? Oh my gosh. I am okay with this not being a ghost ship. This is like infinitely better. Oh my gosh, there's so many. It's a good thing Argos is aside, though, because I'm sure these look delicious. <laughs> oh my gosh, is this king of the little bunny people? Look lively, everyone! I know, I know! This 1,243rd inspection is a mite ahead of schedule, but it is of the utmost importance! For Zodiac, alas, is no more. As of now, our mighty moon has a new purpose. To bear the people of Aetherius to safety! Our time is come, my friends! They are so wholesome. I'm almost in a tear. <laughs> we must be swifter than swift. There is much to do before our guests arrive. I expect your workstations to be immaculate. And don't forget to relay our signal to Atheris. Wait. Atheris? Where 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 is Atheris now? I thought it it broke into many different things. Questions? Yes? No? Maybe so? No? Then hop to it! Is a rather curious crew she hath chosen. Their endearing forms intended to ease the passengers' hearts, perhaps. 
perhaps. <laughs> Ingrid is just in shock. I really need the little bunny people, though, to meet the, the Vera. I, I want that interaction in my life. Thankrid's dumbfounded expression suggests he is still struggling to comprehend the spectacle he has just witnessed. They must be the Loperits mentioned in the Watcher's records. Not at all what I expected, but the Watcher did bid us heed their counsel. I assume the one who gave that rousing speech was their leader, though we might have to ask about in order to track them down. Come on then, let us be about it. Let's see if we can't grab that etherite too while we're at it. And the etherites over here are fairly magnificent. So I don't think we're going to talk to the Watcher again because they said their duty was done. So let's also set this as home. Oh my gosh, I just forgot that I I spent so much money to come back here and the moon was already our home. I am disappointed in myself. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ooh, there's an etherite over there. Wait, is that the way they hum? The leader of the crew, not me, I'm afraid. Singing way is the name. I'm in charge of the construction and maintenance of the atmospheric circulation system. Only the crispest, cleanest air for the people of Aetherus, and that's a promise. All right, we like our clean, fresh air, so I am all for that. Can we jump up that high? That seems high. Like. To our deaths. Oof. Oh. Here I was being good and not jumping from high heights because I thought they were too high and the game forces me to do it anyways. Weaving way. Yum, yum, yum. Leader? No. Sleeping way. My job is, is, hmm. Perhaps I'd better ask. Well, that was adorable, but not super helpful. completely. Well, how in the... When did you get here? Who let you in? Why wasn't I told? I love how they're preparing for guests, but don't notice the guests that are actually here. Take me to your leader. Were you the one giving orders earlier? Let's just, yeah, let's hum at them to you. We'll speak in the language of the Loperets. What was that supposed to be? Your humming? If one can even call it that is atrociously off key. It should sound more like this. Oh my gosh. We've offended them. We were trying to, you know, get in with their culture and stuff and, and be polite and no. <laughs> As leader of the Loperates, I cannot allow substandard attempts at musicality to go unremarked, even if you are a guest, but being the magnemonious sort, 
that I am, I'll forgive you this once. Magnanimous is what I meant. <laughs> well, well, looks like you beat us here. Your friends, I take it. Is this all of them? A group comprised entirely of children. What must their parents be thinking? Wow. This isn't a nursery after all, though perhaps we should build one, or did we build one already? Wow. No matter. You didn't worry your pretty little heads. All will be well, I promise. Watch, these these little lafferettes are probably like a thousand years old or something like that. But goodness me, we shouldn't be standing about gawping. I must take you to meet the others. If you could run along back towards the entrance, you'll find a path that leads to the central platform on the upper floor. There's no wrong way to reach it, but it's a large glowing ball at the center if you should find yourselves lost. I shall gather the others and meet you there. Well then, back to the upper floor it is. I feel like all stairs lead up. So we've just gotta follow them to the top. Are they going to take us home, or are we going to Atheris? More specifically, I am the one whom she charged with the execution of her most vital plans. You might say I'm her right paw. <laughs> Nothing weighs the name, map breather and navigator of the heavens. Pleasure to meet you all, but I'm still trying to make sense of this. Confusion and bewilderment are completely understandable. Fear not, I shall walk you through it. The people of Atheris, through no fault of your own, I'm sure, set in motion a series of events that, unfortunately, culminated in Zodiac's obliteration. Acutely aware of the imminent crisis, your parents said to you, little ones, on ahead while they began the necessary preparations. Oh my goodness. Still not following? No? Very well. I shall elaborate further. Imagine saving, like, two worlds at least and having people talk down to you like your wee children. Whoa. Here, we have a Atheris, your home, and the moon, where we are now. Without Zodiac around to keep things lively, so to speak, the celestial currents of the star have doubtless begun to degrade. A calamity. 
reality of apocalyptic proportions will be visited upon a Ferris, bringing an end to all life. There's that. Oh, that's what we saw. So too hath the Watcher claimed. By thine unperturbed countenance, I gather this eventuality was anticipated. The doom and gloom? Oh yes, quite expected. Imagine, if you will, that a Therese is a delicious carrot that I've forgotten to eat and left out in the midday sun. The most earnest wishes or prayers will not stop it from rotting to the core. So sadly, there's nothing to be done but to abandon said carrot, Atheris, in case the metaphor is lost on you, to its grisly fate. And this moon will serve as the vessel to deliver us to a new home. Just so! We will gather up as many people, supplies and resources as our stores will hold. And then, once everyone is aboard, it's off to another star! Easier said than done, admittedly. For one does not simply hop from star to star on a whim. Which is precisely why we've spent countless years constructing the most propulsive of propulsion systems! We ought to make it to our destination in two shakes of a rabbit's tail. Impressive technology. I dare say it is beyond anything we have ever seen. No need to shower us with praise. All we've done is faithfully carry out the instructions left to us by Hydaelyn. Back in the old days, when she was still just Venar, she was dedicated to the study of the world and its inner workings. And the Watcher, the real one, not the simulacrum you met, was one of her fellow researchers. We and this wondrous vessel, masquerading as a moon, are products of their knowledge and know-how. There's certainly more to you all than meets the eye. Might I ask where exactly you intend to take us? We identified a few promising candidates for resettlement some time ago, but we cannot guarantee that they are fit for habitation. Moreover, the ship can only travel in short bursts. We intend to go down our list, hopping from star to star, until we find one suitable for resettlement. No need to worry, though. The vessel is being refurbished with accommodation for an extended stay as we speak. While we did have to rely upon outside help to determine what amenities were essential, I dare say we have risen to the challenge. Help? From who? <laughs> From you and yours! Who else? Each time we woke to perform regularly scheduled maintenance, we were greeted by the resources you sent us. What better way to learn about preferences and proclivities of our present day charges? Ah. Oh. But you're still adorable little children. Perhaps your elders were responsible for the deliveries. I'm not sure what led you to conclude otherwise, but I can assure you that we are all grown men and women. And I very much doubt my elders know this place exists, much less how to send you so much as a starlight missive. Oh, maybe it's because we're so short and the Amoratines were so tall. Maybe that's why they think we're children. rude person I've met in this game, I think. Well, Amorotines were a great deal taller. In the present day, persons of such prodigious size are exceedingly rare. So, you're saying everyone's not like the Watcher? Oh my gosh, are like the beds just gonna be massive? Uh-oh. 
How are these amenities? Oh, confound it all! Someone could have at least scribbled a note about your profound miniaturization. <laughs> oh my gosh, I feel like the tables are gonna be like huge. Oh, this one of the first books sent to us. A compendium of the people of Atheris, with a few blank pages at the back for minor corrections and updates as needed. Oh my gosh. Maybe Elidibus was just leaving them books on the moon since he visited here often. The sum total of our knowledge of your kind is contained in these pages. Oh no. I thought it was abridged and made small for our benefit, but this isn't a regular sized book, is it? Oh my goodness. you could tell us a bit more about your terrestrial collaborators. Yes, yes, in due time. But first, I'd like to hear more about you, if it's all the same. I'd rather not risk any other complications due to outdated knowledge of our passengers-to-be. interesting I don't really like that it covers the bottom half of the face but like it's it's really neat colors and details for sure like I feel like the the covering of the face kind of reminds me of like the traditional black mage garb and this is where we are going to leave it for today but like oh my goodness I am glad that nobody spoiled these lopperets for me because they are absolutely adorable and like I'm having trouble formulating what's happening next just because I'm, I'm so excited for these these tiny bunny creatures um, but I am curious to know who they were collaborating with because I don't think anyone knew that there was anything on the moon from at least the people that we knew who are currently living so that that leaves a very curious curious situation about who the people are who have been helping the Lopperettes. Um, so hopefully we find that out next time. I'm also curious if they're just going to be picking up all of our people and taking them. I kind of thought this was going to be full of all of the the Sundered um, Zodiac followers, but I don't see anybody except the Lopperettes here. So I'm, I'm curious about what I thought because it seems like this is something else. So Hopefully we'll find out more next time. I'm also curious what's going on at the source because Alphano and Alize are still there um, and things seem to be looking really dark for that. So I'm hoping we get to check in on them soon. Um, but I think that's about all I've got for thoughts right now. So hopefully we will learn some more next time. If you enjoyed yourself, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and go follow me at the links below the video. And I will see you next time for more adventures on the moon.